rational and negative exponents. Okay, first we're going to start with the definition of rational. Rational is a number that can be written as a fraction. So an example would be one-half or eight-fourths. Those are all rational numbers. The rational exponent rule is if you have x or any base to a fraction, so maybe the fraction m over n, that is equal to the nth root of x to the m. Now what an nth root is, is um, you're probably familiar with a square root. Square root of 4 is 2. Well, a square root is a second root. That just means what squared equals 4. Well, 2 squared equals 4. If you take the cube root of 8, sorry, that's a little 3 in there, cube root of 8, we're just saying what to the third power equals 8, well, 2 to the third is 8, so this is 2 as well. So it's just another type of a root. Now there's one other way you can also write it like this with the m on the outside. That means the same thing. Okay, and then our, expo our negative exponent rule. If you have x to a negative exponent, then what you're going to do is you're going to take your base right here. Currently it's over 1. Every number is over 1. So we're going to move that to the bottom of the fraction. So we get 1 over x to the positive a. That's how we make our exponents positive. Likewise, if you have 1 over x to the negative b, if it's on the bottom to begin with instead of the top, all we do is move it to the top. So we get x to the b on top over 1, which is just x to the b. Okay, we're going to start with some practice problems on rational exponents. Um, the first thing we're going to, going to do is write these in exponential form. Exponential form was the x to the m over n form. So we're going to take it from the radical form and put it in exponential form. If you recall, it was the nth root of x to the m, like that. So if I'm looking at this first problem, the n in this case is going to be 2, and the m is going to be 4. So this is going to be x to the 4 over 2, because it's m over n. Simplify that fraction, we get x squared. For number 2, same idea. The 5 is our n, the 7 is our m. Our base is y, because that's what's in the radical. And we have y to the 7 over 5. Now we can't simplify that. 7 fifths doesn't simplify, so we're just done. Okay, next we're going to take um, exponent, er, terms in exponential form, and we're going to write them in radical form. So again, radical form has the n in the root, has your base, and then your m here, or if you want to, your m outside. Either one works. Okay, so for number three, we're going to start with our radical. Our base here is z. That's what the base is of our exponent. So the z goes on the inside. Now if you remember, this is m over n. n goes in the root right there, so put a 6 there. And then your m is the exponent on the z. Okay, for this next one, notice we have 3 and then r to the 7 thirds. This 7 third is only going to the r. So we're not going to put the 3 in the radical. The 3 just stays out front. So we have our radical. r is on the inside. 3 is our root. And 7 is the exponent. If the problem had been like this, then 3r would all be in the radical and it would all be to the seventh power. So make sure you notice when you have parentheses and not how that makes a difference. Okay, now we're going to evaluate. Anytime it says evaluate as opposed to simplify, in the end you want to get it as um, simplified as possible down to one number. So first thing we're going to do is evaluate the fourth root of 81. Anytime we have a root here, we're just saying to ourselves what to the fourth power equals 81. Well, we can just kind of guess and check. 4 to the 1st is 1, so that's not it. If you put in your calculator 2 to the 4th, I said 4 to the 1st, I meant 1 to the 4th is 1. Um, if you put in your calculator 2 to the 4th, 
you get 64. If you try 3 to the 4th, you'll get 81. So just quick, or I'm sorry, not 81. Oh yeah, you get 81. So your answer is 3. So just a quick check, guess and check, and you'll find your answer there. For 6, this one, I you can't guess and check in this form. You can't really do anything with it. So we're going to write this. We're going to take this exponential form and turn it into radical form. So in the radical, we're going to put the 8. It's going to be the third root and 4 up there. Now, 8 to the 4th, that's going to be a pretty big number. I think if you put it in your calculator, it's over 1,000. So let's start with the cube root. We can easily find the cube root of 8. What to the third power equals 8? Well, that's just 2. Make sure you keep your 4. Don't forget it. Now, 2 to the 4th is 64. Okay, now we have some negative exponents. So look back at, the, at your paper and see what your rule is. If we have this an example like number 7, a to the negative 9, we're just going to bring the a and its exponent across the fraction bar. So we're going to end up with a to the positive 9 on the bottom and a 1 on top. On number 8, a to the negative 2 is on the bottom, so we're going to bring it to the top, make it a positive 2, and just write it as a squared. We don't ever leave anything over 1. We just always simplify it to whatever's on the top, so a squared. In number 9, we have one base of m that's to a negative 3 power, and our base of n is to a positive 7 power. So notice that the n has a positive exponent already. We don't need to make, we don't need to change the n at all. So the n is actually going to stay where it is, and the m is going to be what moves, so m to the third. So you can have times where one base stays where it's at and the other one moves, or or they might both move. So you just have to make sure you're only moving the bases with the negative exponents. Okay, in number 10, if you recall our um, power outside of parentheses rule, we're going to multiply this power outside by every power on the inside. So we get x to the negative 2 over y to the negative 4. Okay, both of these have negative exponents, so both of them need to move across the fraction bar. So this x to the negative 2 is going to go to the bottom. It's going to become a positive 2. The y to the negative 4 is going to be moved to the top, and it will become a positive 4. I now have positive exponents all around, so this is my final answer. Okay, now if we look back at the problem in 10, do you notice that all we did was flip the fraction on the inside? It was x squared over y to the 4th and then it became y to the fourth over x squared. Well, any time we have a fraction to a negative 1, all you're doing is flipping the fraction. So in 11, we can just make the quick flip, 6 fifths, and we're done. Okay, for number 12, um, we're going to recall our division property. So here we're just subtracting exponents. I have two ways to do it. I'm going to show you um, a little bit of a longer way first, and then the shorter way, and you can choose which way you want to do it. So our rule is always taking the top exponent minus the bottom. So x to the 5 minus 8, that's going to be x to the negative 3. We can't leave our exponent negative, so we need to make it 1 over x to the positive 3. All I did was bring my base and the exponent down and make the exponent positive. So that's one way you can do it. Another way, the way I like more, is I always take the bigger exponent minus the smaller. So 8 minus 5 is 3, and I leave it where there were more x's. So I'm going to leave x to the third on the bottom because there were 8 x's down here and 5 up here. Remember, an exponent is just x times itself 5 times or 8 times. So again, I take the bigger exponent and I subtract the smaller one from it. So 8 minus 3 is 5. I mean, sorry, 8 minus 5 is 3 and then I leave it where the bigger exponent was, so I'm going to leave that one on the bottom. You can do that problem either way. Okay, for 13, we have P's and R's, so first I'm going to look at the P's. I'm just going to simplify those. Now I have exponent of 14 on the bottom and 5 on the top. If we're doing it like I just did number 12, we're going to take 14 minus 5, we get 9, and there are more, a bigger exponent on the bottom, so p to the ninth stays on the bottom. This way you don't really have to deal with the negative exponents. 
Now for the r's, I have r to the seventh on the top, r squared on the bottom, so the bigger minus the smaller, seven minus two is five, r to the fifth on the top, because seven is bigger than two. Now we have one r and one p, and we can't simplify anything else, so we're done. Okay, 14 is the same idea. Pause your video right now, try 14, and then restart it to hear me do it. Okay, for 14, we're going to look at the a's first. 7 is bigger than negative 4, so I'm going to take 7 minus negative 4. Be careful here. 7 minus a negative 4 is going to become 7 plus 4. So we get a to the 11th on the bottom. It's on the bottom because 7 is bigger than negative 4. With your b's, you have 5 minus 3, which is 2. It's on the top because the 5 is bigger than the 3. And then for the c's, we have 17 minus 13, which is 4. And it's going to be on the bottom because 17 is bigger than 13. So anytime you have a long problem or something like this with multiple bases, you're just going to pick a base, simplify it. Pick the next base, simplify it. Okay. This next one, we have x to the 6 times x to the negative 9. This rule here, we're just adding exponents. So 6 plus negative 9 is x to the negative 3. We can't leave it as a negative exponent, so we need to move it to the bottom of our fraction and make it 1 over x to the third. For this next one, we're just going to start with the m's. So I have 8 minus 2, which is 6. It's going to go on the bottom because 8 is bigger than 2. With your n's, notice one of them doesn't have an exponent, so we need to put an exponent of 1. So it's 10 minus 1, which is 9, and it's also going to be on the bottom because 10 is bigger. If you ever have some, nothing left on the top, just put a 1 up there. 